Hello, this is Brian from the Marlowe team. I'm going to do a demonstration of a generic oracle that can be used with any Marlowe contract. What this oracle does is it watches the blockchain for opportunities to report data. And then when it finds such an opportunity, it creates a transaction to report the data to the Marlowe contract. So the first thing to look at is um, how it finds the uh, opportunity to contribute data. And so here we're looking at a Blockly format view of a, a fragment of a Marlowe contract. And the contract fragment here is a choice. So this is input to the Marlowe contract. And the name of the choice is ADA GBP. And so what this symbol represents is the price of ADA in um, pounds. And then the choice owner here is the actual address of the Oracle. And then we have a very generous range of bounds for the report to come in. So what this is basically is an input to a contract for a price conversion here and um, from a particular party, and then it's given in a range. And so what the Oracle does actually is it looks for blocks that have this pattern. Um, and namely, it looks to see if it's mentioned as the owner of the choice. So if the Oracle is mentioned as the owner of the choice, it looks to see what symbol is being requested. And then if it understands that symbol, if it knows a data source for that, it will go fetch the data. Um, in the example we're using, we're gonna fetch the data from CoinGecko, and then it'll report it into the contract. So what we're gonna do here is actually put some data on the blockchain and um, We'll just get this started because it'll take a little while. We're going to submit a couple transactions. What we have here in the top panel is the log for the Cardano node. So you can see transactions being added and removed as they're confirmed. And we have a little loop here that's going to create three different um, Marlowe contracts that involve Oracle input. So the first one is going to be for the um, the uh, overnight funds rate from the New York Federal Reserve. And then from CoinGecko, we're going to get the ADA price uh, in euros and the Ether price in Bitcoin. And um, this little script is in the Marlowe repository, and it just creates some simple test contracts. In a real contract, you'd design it yourself, and you'd include that block I showed. So all these contracts are... They're just a, a dead simple contract that take input um, from a choice owner and with the choice symbol there that we saw in the block. So we have those um, now on the blockchain. And so I'm gonna close this panel. And what we're gonna do is start up the Oracle. So what we do is we tell it which network we're using. This is a configuration file that says we're gonna use the pre-production network. This is the address of um, the Oracle, because the Oracle needs to know who it's uh, operating as. And then the payment key is the uh, signing key for that address. So the Oracle will be um, looking at all the Marlowe contracts on the blockchain and trying to find ones uh, that it contribute to. And immediately we see a couple things. Here um, it found one. Um, this first contract, 1029, uh, it tried to contribute to that. And it turns out this contract is actually timed out already. So even though it saw something, um, it tried, it couldn't do it. Here's another case where a contract is using a symbol XYZ that um, it can't understand because that's not a uh, currency pair, for instance. Here's another one where we have like a typo in the currency pair. So it sometimes it ignores things, sometimes it tries and fails. But if um, the contract is truly ready for input and the, um, the uh, symbol is known to the Oracle, then it makes a report. So what it did here is it, it walked the blockchain. So it walked through you know, hundreds of um, Marlowe contracts and I found these here. And this one in particular, it said it was ready for the SOFR Oracle. And it understands the SOFR Oracle, and it actually went to the New York Federal Reserve 
website and looked up the SOFR rate, which is 430 basis points right now. Then it continued. It found another contract, the one for the price of ADA in euros, and that's the one we just created over here in the other window. We're showing this on the same machine, but um, it's all decentralized, so they could be on very distant machines. There's no need for any communication or knowledge of um, the processes running. So there, um, this looked up the ADA price in euros from CoinGecko. It confirmed that transaction. You can see the transactions being um, added and removed from the memory pool as they're confirmed. And the third one um, here is the price of um, Ether in Bitcoin. And this is a running process. So what we can actually do is um, we can run some manually. So um, let's uh, do the price of ADA in US dollars. So we'll submit that transaction. You see it go into the memory pool there. In a little while, there it is removed. And then um, the Oracle has detected that. It understands that symbol and um, it will um, it will look it up. So once again, it's looking it up from CoinGecko. And we can give it one that it doesn't know. So um, it, it, uh, you know, it doesn't know, for instance, the price of Ether denominated in ADA. Create a contract like that. This Oracle cannot serve that contract right now. And so once again, we'll see it's um, when it's removed from the memory pool, that mean, means it's confirmed. And then we'll um, see it appear here and it's gonna ignore it because it, it doesn't have a price feed for that. The Oracle is customizable, so you could add lots of different price feeds to it. So the memory pool, it's still in the memory pool so that on average there's about 20 seconds between nodes. Looks like it was just confirmed. You see it doesn't know this symbol, so it's going to ignore it. So that's basically the demonstration. I'll say a few more words here. This is on the contract we saw. And um, as you can tell, this is a centralized Oracle. There's one operator of it. The owner of this public key needs to be trusted. But within the Marla language, you can combine Oracles. So here's a fragment of, an Oracle, of a Marlow contract where we actually have three Oracles. So these could be three operators, maybe state pools are operating them or some trusted parties, maybe an exchange or someone else is operating those. So the Marlowe contract will actually take input of that same data value from three different sources, Oracle 1, 2, and 3, and then you can do computations on that. So here's a very simple computation where you're just summing the three values and dividing by three. So you're getting the average price over the three sources. A more sophisticated and safer way to do it would be to use a median. So that would be the middle value. Um, because if one of the oracles tried to cheat and put in a really high value or a really low value to bias the result, that would go in the average. But if one of the oracles cheated and did that and you were doing the medium, median, you would only get the middle value and um, that outlier uh, that attempted manipulation wouldn't play any part. A variation on this oracle be, would be one that requires a fee. So as you can see, we were running and we were just doing transactions when we found anyone on the blockchain who had an or a Marlowe contract that needed that particular oracle. Um, that could end up being expensive because the fees have to be paid for transactions. So what you could, you could also do is have um, what we had before, which is this um, choice that the Oracle makes, but then the Oracle actually gets a payment. So you could have a fee. So maybe the Oracle would get one or two ADA as compensation for being there, being able to report and giving an accurate value. And what the Oracle would do in this case, it would look for this fragment of a contract. So if it found, um, if it found just just this, um, without any pay on it, it wouldn't make a report. It would have to find 
the request for the choice, and then it can look ahead in the contract because that's on the blockchain um, and see, oh, the Marlowe contract is going to pay the Oracle um, the fee, and it can see that the right fee is paid, for instance. And that way, the Oracle could be compensated. And the nice thing about this is there's no there's no coordination. You just have to publish um, which symbols the Oracle can provide data for, what the address of the Oracle is, and then if there's a fee, um, what would be the required fee. So what's going on behind the scenes? What we have is, of course, the Cardano blockchain. We're using Marlow Runtime, which is the back end for Marlow that does the off-chain work. And um, you could imagine um, the third parties are using some sort of front end for Marlow and um, perhaps they're using Marlow Runtime too, that would be likely, um, but they could be anywhere. And so this is the decentralized architecture. The Marlow Oracle, what it does is it has its own instance of Marlow Runtime and Marlow Runtime uses typed protocols. And so what is gonna happen here is first the Oracle, when it starts up, creates a Marlow Discovery Sync client. So it's gonna be watching every Marlow contract on the blockchain to see is there a new block, is there a new Marlow contract that was created. So this discovers Marlow contracts. This is implemented in Haskell. We're using STM channels for communication through these components. The next stage is once you know there's a contract, you have the contract ID, what's going on in that contract? So we open up a uh, Marlow history sync client here and we watch the contracts. So the first thing we do is look at the creation transaction. We see the contract and we can walk through that contract and see at any point in time in the future, will it ever need this Oracle? And if the answer is no, then it, it just um, ignores it. It doesn't need to do any more work because the uh, Marlow contracts are immutable once they're on the blockchain. So the contract is not gonna change its mind and, and um, want Oracle input. So uh, in cases where the contract will or might need Oracle input later in its history, um, the Oracle keeps track of that contract and kind of watches um, all the way up to the, uh, the tip of the blockchain to see, is it time to um, contribute data to this contract as a choice like we saw in the demo. And so at some point, it may reach that point and once again through an SDM channel, we go through a transaction process. And the first thing to do is actually get the requested data. So if we're asking for CoinGecko data or New York Federal Reserve data, um, there's a process that's actually gonna go out to those websites and use their APIs and gather that data. And then we have a, um, a protocol for Marlowe um, transaction jobs. This will basically build the transaction. Uh, once it's built, it's gonna sign it, and then it's gonna submit it. And so that's basically the life cycle. So that's the demonstration of the Oracle and um, the basics of what's going on under the hood. Thank you.